Hey there, what's going on? Tim Warner here for another lesson. This one is on using GitHub Copilot for Azure. Now, just to set the stage, the word Copilot is popping up all over the place, really. Microsoft uses it as their brand name for their AI or GPT-powered solutions. GitHub, which is owned by Microsoft but operates entirely independently, they have their Copilot, and that's what we're concerned with today, principally. And then OpenAI originated the generative pre-trained transformer model to begin with, and they're doing all their own stuff. But to scope this lesson down, I'm showing you a page from the Microsoft Dev blog and it's from May 21st of 2024, Introducing GitHub Copilot for Azure. And I'm going to link to this page in the YouTube description so that you can sign up for the private preview. Because as of this recording on June 22nd, 2024, this product is in private preview. And some notes about private preview, uh, it's you're going to be subject to an NDA. And that's why I'm not going to, for instance, show you the private repo that you get access to for that obvious reason. But I'm going to show you the end user experience, and I'm going to give you the high-level overview of what it is, how to set it up, and how to get started with it. All right? So to get the prerequisites out of the way, here I am in Visual Studio Code, and I have some extensions installed. I think I might be in the wrong version here. Let me quickly check my help menu and do an about insiders. Yes, in terms of prerequisites, at least during the private preview, you're gonna need to do this under VS Code insiders and also when you load up the extension, specifically the GitHub Copilot. Let me search right now, GitHub Copilot and the GitHub Copilot chat. At least my instructions were you have to use the pre-release version, which you can get to from the Visual Studio Marketplace here in VS Code. Now, today I noticed that I could not find any further references to a pre-release version of the GitHub Copilot, the original completion extension. And frankly, I don't know if that's going to pose a problem in this demo. I seem to remember there was a pre-release that you could do. That's definitely the case as of June 22nd, 2024 with the GitHub Copilot chat extension. As you can see, I'm using the pre-release version on that. And then we can also check our accounts panel here where you can verify how you're signed into the GitHub extensions you've got loaded into VS Code. And then also I've got a reference to my Azure dev account. Now that's important for what we're discussing today. I would also say that you need to, at the least, Install the Azure account extension so you can sign in and denote your context. And we get this nifty Azure resources tree as an activity bar pane. And that will pay big dividends once you've lit up the Azure extension, the GitHub Copilot for Azure extension. So another prerequisite is that you have to have a license for GitHub Copilot. That should be pretty reasonable. And then in this example, prereq is that you've got one or more Azure subscriptions that you can authenticate to. So I've completed all those prerequisites. I'm ready to get started. I'll open on the activity bar the chat pane. And then down here, hopefully you're doing this already using the at contexts. The built-in ones allow you to ask questions of various scopes of the VS Code, GitHub, Terminal, Object Model. At GitHub, at Terminal, as, at VS Code, and at Workspace. And then we're going to extend this over time. And specifically how I loaded in the Azure one is I did a, I brought up my command palette and I did an extension install from V6. Again, that's something that eventually we, not, we won't have to do because we may not, it maybe it'll be a setting that's in the GitHub Copilot chat extension. Maybe this will be a new extension. But of course, when you're doing V6 installs, you're dealing with pre-release and preview, blah, blah, blah. The other thing I want to say about private preview and Microsoft services is that unless those engineering teams and those program managers tell you otherwise, you should assume no service level agreement or SLA, nor customer support. That's a whole other group of people who do Azure customer support. And they obviously need to know about new products and features so they can support customers. And because this particular extension is so early days, we can't assume that. Again, I may be, you may be saying, look, Tim, you're preaching to the proverbial choir. I know, but I'm saying that 
to account for my learners who are newer in the industry and you want to get up on the most important wisdom. Well, at least the important industry wisdom, according to one person, yours truly. So let's see. I've already got a chat started here. I'm going to click new chat so we could start green. And in terms of what do we want to look at? Well, you might think, cool, well, I can bring up my app service that I've deployed to Azure and I can ask questions to some endpoint. That's another question, actually. What are you addressing when you do at Azure? I don't know is my short answer. But what I suspect is that these at contexts, the way it, it seems like it's shaping out in the industry is similarly to how we can at a human, the idea is that we can at a GPT, all right? So I suspect that when we send a request to Azure, it's being, maybe it's a function call that GitHub Copilot does and passes you into a fine-tuned GPT that's really smart on Azure. I think that's, that's my best understanding, all right? But understand, number one, I don't leak NDA information. And number two, I'm simply a fallible human being, and I speak only for myself. So anyway, what's the good stuff, Tim? Well, I can't show you any integration with this Azure uh, GitHub Copilot for Azure bot with files, because specifically that's an, an issue. So um, that's not there yet. I'm sure I'll record a follow-up video as this extension matures. What we're limited to now is in the chat pane, we can ask questions in general questions and also questions about our specific stuff. Like what if we're preparing or working on an Azure app service project and we're thinking of, well, is that Azure public IP going to be static or DHCP? We could say something like in Azure do static web apps. And that might be a special question too. Are the rules different for static web apps? Uh, support Azure reserved public IPs. So the idea is that we can at Azure from within VS Code to ask general questions that otherwise we would have to go into the docs, the MS Learn docs. Now, of course, we see here this response is not helpful that I'm seeing from the AI. I'm showing you this super duper early days, but I want you to think ahead as this project matures, how convenient it is. I might say at Azure, which app service plan is most appropriate if I need a database, back end, a custom domain, TLS, you know, you name it. And so, because we may already be working in VS Code doing a BICEP deployment script that's going to give us the app service. And now we're, again, and, and I'm seeing some bugs here. It's just giving me a stock generic answer. By the way, I want to remind you how important it is to give the engineering teams feedback. It's definitely if you're in a something like a private preview or if you're in a preview, it's not like Microsoft is obligating you to give feedback. But in that case, it's especially welcomed. But I'm here to tell you that you can see, or I can see <laughs> in the private preview docs, that when you vote a response is unhelpful, it's uh, wired into VS Code Insiders where you can get out and file an issue. So definitely recommend that. And I'm sure several people, if they're seeing this generic response, I mean, that's, if that's going to be a big bug, that's showstopper. And I'm sure the dev team will address that, all right? Uh, the other integration at this point with GitHub Copilot for Azure that I wanted to show you, besides just the addressing the at Azure bot or identity, I don't know if there's an official name for those at references. I've been calling them contexts, but I don't think that's on the mark either. Watch this. I've signed in to the Azure account extension, so I therefore can pop into my subscription and here I'm taking a look at my PyGoat web application where I can, depending upon my RBAC, I can make read-write changes here. Nice. Here's what I really love at this point about the GitHub Copilot for Azure extension. Watch this. I can right-click, Ask Azure. So we've got nice context menu. And because it's right at the top of the menu, it's super easy to click. And as you can see, that threw us in here. And here I got a pretty good response. I mean give a thumbs up. So remember, unhelpful is going to be your entry point to give the dev team feedback. So I understand you want to ad address this. Please feel free to ask. 
Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. What can I ask it? Um, is there any PowerShell in this project we could discuss? You know, I'm just sending a plain old garden variety human-esque prompt into the AI. Okay, and again, sadly, last night I was getting legit responses from the API. Now, and something we could check is we can bring out the output pane. And let's take a look here. Uh, what do we have? I haven't looked into the logs for this extension. Let's see, there's an Azure account log stream app service gist. I'm thinking we're gonna go to GitHub Copilot chat first. And let's see. And you know, let me be real candid here. The GitHub Copilot chat log output was not anywhere near this clean and non-interesting just as recently as a week ago. I, I'm really interested to learn more. This is basically worthless. What it used to be like, really, I don't think I was hallucinating it either. What it used to be like is that GitHub Copilot chat log stream would give you every request and response. It wouldn't give you every bit of JSON, but you could see under the hood details like, were you addressing GPT-3.5 or GPT-4? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a curious person. <laughs> Here's the GitHub Copilot completion log. Again, very, very light on details. I just don't know how to explain that, to be honest. GitHub Copilot log. Okay, that's given me a whole lot of nothing. Well, the plot thickens, doesn't it? Let me see. I think that's really about it as far as GitHub Copilot for Azure. Let me take a look at the repo readme again on my other monitor to see if I'm leaving anything out. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, this is important. It's not working now, clearly, but we can also query about our own resources. I'll say, tell me how many app services I have in the East U.S. region. So as long as you've signed in with the Azure account extension, that request will go out delegated on our behalf. Again, it's bugging out. But let me tell you, when, when I last used this last night, I noticed that the extension relies a lot upon Azure Resource Graph, which, you know, it's pretty solid decision, it seems to me, given that uh, ARG and its Custo implementation its query interface, is normally how we do inventory our Azure. So that was smart. And actually, another thing that I wanted to show, but because it's bugging out, I can't right now, is that when it does an ARG query, I seem to recall you being able to see that query, which also provides an enormous opportunity for you for education and even potential career advancement, because you're letting GitHub Copilot and GitHub Copilot for Azure level up your skill set directly while you work. I mean, as an instructor, that's a dream scenario as far as I'm concerned. Alrighty? So once again, you, as long as you've got an active subscription to GitHub Copilot, consider getting in on the private preview, load it up, and then you can start using this at Azure context, again, for general questions about Azure and also specific questions about your own Azure deployments. Hope you found this session helpful. Thanks a lot. Catch you later.